Hello everybody, I am Cheryl Campbell from Four Winds of Change, and I am here today with one of my business partners, Holly Rovinger. I met Holly a couple of years ago, and she and I have just really connected over so many different things, and one of them is our love of cooking. So we started another company called Solutions with Style and its sister, Cooking with Style. And we have just had a ball, and today we're here to talk to you about something really exciting. So Holly, before I introduce you officially, say hi to everybody. Hi guys, I'm really, <laughs> really excited. I mean, I can't tell you how excited to be here with you today and to share what we have cooking for you because um, I think a lot of people are really going to appreciate it. I think it's really going to hit home for a lot of you. So thanks, Cheryl. Yeah, I'm excited about this too, Holly. So for all of you out there, let me tell you a little bit about Holly, okay? She actually attended Syracuse University where she received a, a BS in Nutrition and Dietetics. She also attended Florida International University where she got her MBA in, which is of course a Master's in Business Administration. She's been called the master of reinvention and is sought after for empowerment and promotions expert, an international speaker, a consultant, and a coach. She's also the founder of Empowering Women and Smart Men Monthly, the creator of Enthroned Empress Inc., and co-creator and founder of PublishPromoteAndProfit.com, a 90-day boot camp a program that empowers business professionals and entrepreneurial experts to be found and heard in an extremely noisy marketplace. Most recently, she's created the Simple and Sassy Workbook series, including the number one best-selling The Simple and Sassy Guide to Financial Empowerment, Seven Critical Steps for Women to Learn How to Become Financially Savvy and Prepared, in which she shares her personal story of overcoming obstacles and survives as the inspiring woman you wish to become. What a lot of people don't know about Holly is that she actually co-authored and published and promoted a cookbook when the internet was still in its infancy stage. So Holly, wow, this is a lot um, of different things that you do, and I know how good you are at everything you do. So would you like to share a little bit of, with um, our audience about uh, why you decided to write the cookbook? Sure, I'm, I'm so excited to do that. You know, and the funny thing is you, you talked about how um, I wrote it when the internet was a baby. And, and really just I want to share with you, and I'm kind of going to be dating myself a little bit, but when I was in college and I did study to become a dietitian, I was actually in a program where I worked with one of the doctors there who actually started talking about this thing called the internet. And I helped her develop a workbook that we put online. And at that point, it was just such an idea, such a conceptual thing, that it was really hard for me to understand what was this internet gonna be all about, except that I knew it was gonna be a huge database. Never dreaming in a million years that I would be so involved with the internet and connecting with people truly all over the world. And you know, as Cheryl mentioned, she and I have connected. Believe it or not, you guys, um, Cheryl and I have never met in person. <laughs> We've become, you know, truly good friends, but it's it's all through the internet. So I digress a little bit, but what I want you to know is my computer that I worked on when I wrote this other cookbook was a dinosaur. It was gigantic. It was a huge machine, and I don't know if any of you remember that. So it really was in the beginning of um, computer and internet infancy. So what happened is, and I'm going to actually just show you a cover. It's a beautiful cover of the book that uh, myself and another dietitian uh, put together. The idea for it uh, came about because dining out uh, traditionally, um, the recipes and the food served is loaded with uh, tons of fat, tons of calories, and so many things that, that truly just are not healthy for you. So um, my coworker and I, I went to different chefs and restaurants throughout the entire state of Florida, got their recipes, and lightened them up. We made them healthier. So the book is actually called Today's Specials, Light Recipes from Florida's Best Chefs and Restaurants. And it was a, a bear uh, to put together. It definitely took up a year of my life you know, to get it going, but it was extremely rewarding. 
and the other reason besides wanting to you know give everybody a lighter look or a lighter way to serve their recipes was that um, at least for me personally i wanted to leave my legacy you know i wanted this was my first footprint on the earth besides what i'd done personally okay this was something that would be around forever and it really helped me start living my legacy so um that's why i started writing it cheryl um do you want me to go into a little deeper yeah you know holly though you mentioned that you, it's important to leave your legacy i think that is so important too you know I, I i come from a family of cooks that are really known for being fantastic home cooks and my nanny was one of them and we had nanny cookies nanny meatballs but we never ever um asked her to put down a recipe and no matter how much you try to recreate those nanny cookies and nanny meatballs they just always come out a little bit different and it saddens me that we don't have her recipes Ah, well, you're jumping ahead a little bit, my friend, because that I'm so thrilled that you just shared that because um, in a few minutes, um, we'll introduce to you what we really want to bring bring to the marketplace, what we really want to share with you. And, you know, Cheryl, that actually is one of the main reasons that um, my daughter and I, who you're here about a little bit, you know, put this together because when... Um, my mother was sick and and on her deathbed it, it just made me realize oh my god mom can you share with me you know your recipes and that really isn't the time or the place to do it so um you know i really do appreciate your your getting into that uh, before we do hop into you know what what we really want to share with you let me tell you what it took to put this guy together or this girl together it was, like I said, a year of my life um, to do because there are many steps that you really have to take to get your cookbook organized and put together. We had to come up with the format for the book. And I am going to look at my notes just because I don't want to forget to tell you guys anything. We had to decide on different sections. Um, we decided to self-publish. That was a decision that we made. So we had to research a lot of different publishers. We had to decide on our cover art and what we did with the cover we actually you know we we searched out people who did different types of art we found an artist we liked and um this is what the artist came up with and it, it's very catchy it's colorful you know we did some beta testing and people loved it so we went with this cookbook and we called it today's specials because you know, that's kind of a catchy phrase, too. What's on your menu today? What's your special? So we had to also figure out how are we going to contact these chefs and restaurants? How are we going to solicit the recipes that we wanted for the book? So that was another step. We had to learn how to format a recipe. You know, for those listening, you should open a cookbook, look at it, and you'll start to see that things are definitely consistent the way cookbooks are written and publish the way the rest of these are presented to you. So, you know, it was all about the proper formatting, the proper English to use. We also decided to do a nutritional breakdown of our recipes. We did a nutritional analysis because this was a nutrition-based cookbook. You know, after all, we were both two dietitians putting it together. The other thing we did, and this was the fun part, Cheryl, <laughs> we home tested every recipe. So we took the chef's recipes, we modified them and then we home tested each one. So it was a huge undertaking, but you know, really, really, um, like I said, it was so rewarding. And um, when I started the um, marketing of it, once we had it actually published, which again, that was a job and a half in itself. When I started marketing it, um, I went on TV, I went on radio, and then I did a, a lot of local boutiques in my area, a lot of holiday boutiques, a lot of fundraising boutiques, and the women just went wild for the book. So all the work and the effort really, really did pay off. You, you know, know Holly, you, Holly you, men you mentioned that um, you tested every recipe in your own kitchen, and I'm just curious, uh, did you take your own pictures too? We, um, this book, because it's really was so much before the, um, again, in its baby 
state. <laughs> we don't, like you can see, we don't have a lot of pictures inside. Um, what we do have is, is just, it's black and white. So yeah, we did crop them. We did, you know, here's a black and white picture of our cover. There are no colored recipes inside, Cheryl. So, you know, really we weren't able to do that. And I think, you know, at some point, um, Alexa and I probably will update the book and maybe put some pictures in. But using pictures in cookbooks, you have to be really careful because if you don't take the pictures yourself, you have to be careful what you use. You know, and that's one of the things that I very carefully study. Mm -hmm. Is that because of copyright laws? Absolutely. You know, when you're using um, a picture, or let's say, for example, you want to use someone else's recipe in a book, there are certain things you must specify and say in your recipe to keep it legal. Because this is fun, this is rewarding, this is leaving your legacy. This is not, oh my God, you know, I'm involved in a lawsuit. We don't want this to be any aggravation or any pain. This is truly fun and legacy. So there really is a lot more to it than you would normally imagine. Yeah, you know, it, it's it's definitely a step-by-step -step process. You know, we included a front picture. Um, we did include, if you can see, um, a back picture. Man, I don't know, I'm gonna put this up close, guys, because look at my hair. <laughs> What was I thinking? But you know what? It really wasn't style back then. So we actually went into a professional uh, kitchen and had that picture taken. So we did the back picture. We included an about section. We included acknowledgments, a table of contents, um, a preface, a forward. So many things were included in this book that it gave me um, so much education, so much knowledge, so much experience, not in only writing a cookbook, but in uh, publishing and promoting and marketing. And um, that, that's really what gave me the confidence to write you know, my other book, my best-selling um, Simple and Sassy Guide. So it, it did give me the education and the confidence to really um, not only do it myself, but really, you know, help others and teach others how to do it. Mm -hmm. And you're you're going to actually explain to us a little bit, I hope, on how we can create uh, one of these legacy books ourselves. And I have to tell you, I wish I had you around a couple of years ago when I created a couple of cookbooks. And I only sold mine on Kindle. And but I actually pulled them down, even though they were bestsellers, because I did not take the time to do all of my own uh, pictures. And I probably was a 50-50 mix of my own pictures, and then I borrowed some from the internet. And they actually questioned whether the recipes themselves were mine because I used other people's pictures. And so I didn't want to get into any hassle, and I pulled down books that were bestsellers because of that. So I think that if I had you in my life back then, I would have had um, a little guidance on how to do it properly so I didn't run into that kind of problem. So are you here to share some of, some of your experience with us on how to do one of these books? Yes, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try, tell me if this is going to work, I'm going to try to um, share my screen, tell me if you can see it. Basically, you know, you're here today to learn, okay, well, why, you know, why should I even care about what you're doing? And, you know, what are you going to, you're going to show me here? But basically, and I think Cheryl gave you some of the reasons, you know, why you may want to do a legacy cookbook and a family cookbook. You know, she wishes, you know, she had some of her nani's recipes. Um, I wish I had sat down with my grandma and gotten some of her recipes. So, you know, one of the reasons actually for uh, creating a family cookbook or what I like to call a legacy cookbook is the fact that you can include information about the family members and you can include the recipes which will be passed down from generation to generation, which to me is just priceless. You, there's no way to even put any kind of a tag on that. So it will be a way for you to share the information, recipes about the person from generation to generation. But in addition to that, some of you may have recipes from family members. But the problem is you have them on little note cards, you have them on pieces of paper, you have them on scraps stuck all over the place. So this is a way to really organize them and, and get them in one place. So I'm just going to show you um, 
The book that I'm going to talk to you about making will also give you information on a table of equivalents. There will be um, category pages on it that you can see. Um, this is kind of like the, the side of the book, and this is actually my daughter's um, cookbook, which she put together, her legacy cookbook, which actually Cheryl gave me the idea to put this whole thing together. Um, this is um, a very simple recipe, and see, that's a picture of my mom who, believe me, Cheryl, I think about every single day, and I miss her you know, more than I can tell you. But this is a way for my children's children to see a picture of my mom, and, and that's my dog, Cookie, in there. So it's her little legacy, too. And um, this is Danny's book. She actually um, took these pictures in her book, and that's the cover of her book. So I just wanted to just share those um, little pictures with you, and then I'm going to tell you really you know, what we have for you today. You know, Holly, I am so excited about all of this and I'm really looking forward to going through the process myself. So please share with everybody exactly what you do have for us. Um, what we're gonna do, guys, is we're going to, um, and we're gonna offer this in a an online format through, a, call it a webinar, call it a presentation, you know, call it whatever you will. We're gonna first review for you the different sites where you can publish your book online and which ones we think are the best and then our choice which we think is the easiest and the best for getting the most information possible and the easiest way for you to do it we're going to teach you step by step how to do this how to set up your recipes how to get your pictures in there how to make your cover we're going to actually help you get recipes from your family uh, not always the easiest thing to do, so we'll have a little email template for you. We're also going to kind of give you hints on uh, places and events that you can go to family-wise to really help you get the recipes. We're going to give you the anatomy or call it an analysis of a recipe, like a little template for your book. So you know very easily how you can copy and paste the information and exactly how to write up a recipe to make it easy for you. We're also going to give you a little template for, you know, to tell about your loved one. You know, for you, Cheryl, maybe like a little, you know, paragraph and a place to put a picture of your Nani or Noni. Is that how you say it, Noni? <laughs> Actually, it's, yeah, it's, it's Nani. It's like, you know, I had, I had a Nani, I had a Mai Mai, you know, if, every grandmother had a different name. Okay. But, and uh, I had a bunny, so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I have to, I have to say one more thing just now, because you said that one of the templates that you're going to do for us is showing us an easy way to write down recipes. And that to me is critical because I'm one of those cooks that I do a pinch of this, a handful of that, a swirl around the pan. And it's very, that's just my normal way of cooking. So even for me, when somebody asks me to share a recipe, I'm like, uh, and I kind of go into, you know, frightened deer mode because I don't know how to transfer it to writing. Yeah, and, and it is critical, you know, if you pick up some cookbooks and you study them, there is, like I said, there's a definite consistency to the way um, they are written and they should be written. You know, for example, you know, in the order in which you add your ingredients, that's the way the ingredient list should flow. That's, you know, a little tidbit for you. Mm -hmm. We will also go through the legalities of using uh, cookbook recipes and pictures that aren't yours. Again, very important because this is fun. This is all about, you know, leaving your legacy, doing a family cookbook, you know, no trials, no tribulations. And then um, we also have some bonuses for you because what would a program be without a few bonuses? So, you know, we're going to include um, what I had in my book about healthy recipe substitution. So how do, if somebody wanted to take some of the recipes from your great grandma or your great aunt or great uncle, whatever, they can lighten them up, you know, if they're on a special diet and they want to make them healthier. So that's going to be possible. Um, an A to Z guide to food preparation tips. We'll include that. We're going to include a fish cooking chart, ingredient chemistry, and other words. Why do you need baking powder? Why do you need baking soda? What purpose do they serve? So that will be included. Um, measurements, abbreviations. Um, I've done a lot of research on finding free picture sites and how to use them. So we will be including that. And we'll also show you, you know, also in that step-by-step process we're going to show you how to take your own pictures how to crop them 
and how to get them in your cookbook. And then you, you and I, Cheryl, had talked about, we're, we're also going to give all of you a 30% off coupon to one of the products that we developed, which is a nonstick baking mat that is reusable over and over again. And I, I do believe it's one of the only ones that is manufactured in the United States. And that's why, you know, we're so proud to offer it to you. So we do have it for sale on Amazon. We're going to give you a 30% off coupon as part of our bonus. Now, I am going to be teaching the class with my daughter, Danny, and I'm going to have Cheryl tell you a little bit about her. Um, the reason I decided to do it with her is because she has that cookbook. You know, she did it and, you know, it blew me away. Um, it, the funny thing is it blew my son away, and he was like, oh, my God, order me one, too. I want one of your cookbooks. So it really was very exciting. So um, because she's so, so close to me, Cheryl, I'm going to have you just um, – you know, read Danny's little bio to us. Holly, I'd be happy to do that. Danny actually graduated from the University of Maryland with a Bachelor of Arts in Communications. She then went on to use her talents as a meeting and event planner and became a CMP, which is a certified meeting planner. She has planned and coordinated events all over the world, and Danny inherited her love of cooking from her family and is a celebrated cook in her own right. And Holly, I am so looking forward to meeting with her and working with her, and it's just fun to do a mother and daughter team too, so I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I've enjoyed talking with you today, and I'm gonna send it back to you and see if you have anything else you wanna share with our people before we give all the details about what we have in store for them. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Cheryl. Um, yeah, Danny's a little firecracker. She um, she's five feet tall, but I've been I've worked with her at some of her meetings that she's run, and um, you know she walks around with her little walkie-talkie, and boy does she know how to organize and uh, plan things. So she's the perfect person to really help us walk through organizing this and you know getting this the getting this done. And I, I really encourage all of you, um, I think there's going to be a button um, on this page that you can hop on over and um, join the class with us. I think this is an amazing thing you can, you know, put together, not only, you know, to leave your legacy, give it as a gift, you know, start giving it as a gift. I know a lot of uh, moms want to give it as a gift to their daughters or daughter-in-laws um, people may want to give it to their cousins, um, nieces, nephews, whatever, for a holiday gift. So the perfect time to do this is really now. Um, get started making your family cookbook, your legacy cookbook. Um, have fun with it. Uh, join us in learning step by step so that we can really help you, you know, get down to the nitty gritty. You know, just do this step by step. We really just help you do this as easy as possible. So. Um, you know, for myself and my daughter, I am, I'm looking forward to seeing you in the class. So thanks, Cheryl. Okay, so a thank you for joining us today and make sure that you check all the information below. Enjoy and we'll talk to you soon. Cheryl Campbell saying goodbye.